I mean, look at it, the transparent build and it can do this. The controls are very convenient and the performance. Oh my freaking God, the performance. Portable gaming is something that's of interest to you. The Ionium might just be what the doctor ordered. You know, open up a dictionary, look up abysmal and I'm sure you can see Ionium's That is how bad it is. But, this is, I mean, I just love it. I can't, I can't hold it in. Do not freaking beep me. You know how you buy stuff looking at videos on YouTube? Well, that is what happened to me. I was looking at the low cost retro consoles and came upon a channel called Taki Udon. And that led me to seeing an insane amount of videos about this. And I had to have one for myself. So finally, after a lot of work, this got here a couple of weeks back, I did a shots on it. Uh, now, in case you missed that, this one's kind of sorta like an expensive Nintendo Switch. One that runs on Windows and has an actual Ryzen 4500U APU on the inside. So did I regret this impulse buy or am I absolutely in love with the Ionia? That is what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. Now, if this is your first time here, or if you like me can't stand this show, do not freaking beep me. I said Ash Hold. My name's Ash, you're watching C4 Retech. And if you appreciate me being a half functioning human being, despite all the voices in my head, go ahead, share, subscribe, turn on notifications and all that stuff. Let's get started. Guys, I know I'm supposed to keep talking about stuff and not give away the conclusion right at the start. You know, that's how I get watch time. That's basically how YouTube works. But this is, I mean, I just love it. I can't, I can't hold it in. I mean, look at it, the transparent build and it can do this. The controls are very convenient and the performance, oh my freaking God, the performance. Okay, you know what, enough of the apping. Let's get to the good stuff. I'm gonna start by showing you some AAA titles. By default, the Aya Neo, it comes with a 15 watt TDP. I cranked it up to 20 watts for these games, so battery life is just about two hours-ish. Now for those wondering, TDP stands for Thermal Design Power. So that's basically the power consumed by the APU. So you know, more power equals more performance, but it also means more heat generated. So you can't keep cranking up the power endlessly because at one point you're gonna, you're gonna hit the th thermal limits at which point the 4500U is gonna, uh, it's gonna start throttling. So I've set it to about 95 degrees here uh, before it's gonna uh, cut power consumption and throttle. Uh, now the Ionio, it is uh, using a Ryzen APU, which is built on the seven nanometer process. So it easily hits about 30 watt TDP. Uh, no, you can't really say that about its Intel counterpart, but I'm going off on a tangent, guys. That's a video for another day. Uh, that is gonna be a video though. Now, another factor to consider uh, with TDP is battery life. The Ionio has a 47 watt hour battery. So at a TDP of about 20 watts, it's gonna consume 20 watts for the APU and about five to five to seven watt, watts ish for things like Wi-Fi, display, etc. So that's why I mentioned we're gonna get a little under two hours of battery life. That's again, another limiting factor on TDP you'd like to uh, think of before you choose whatever TDP you wanna run your device at. So anyway, enough with the yapping, let's get to the games first, Doom Eternal. This is running at medium graphics and as you can see, 45 to 50 FPS, that's quite consistent. Also note how the CPU and GPU temps are nowhere close to the limits. The limit, like I said, is 95 degrees. So we do have some headroom. Uh, now dropping to low settings means you can get solid 60 FPS uh, and could even get away with a lower TDP. 60 FPS on a portable device, that's just something, isn't it? Next, Gears of War 5. This is at low and we are hitting a solid and stable 60 FPS once again. The gaming experience, fantastic. The temperatures indicate there's still room to push performance if needed. Uh, now guys, this is a 800p display and it's excellent. 500 nits of brightness, it's very rich. 800p in the smartphone world, it would be something we call sucky. But not when we are talking AAA gaming. Uh, anything more is overkill and this is something I will address, I will talk about in my One GX One Pro video. That one has a full HD or a 1200p screen. Now, everything does not need to be run at low. Like for example, NFS Hot Pursuit Remastered runs at 60 FPS and medium at 20 watts. Looks really beautiful doing so, doesn't it? Now, while we're talking about racing games, do note that LT and RT are not analog, they're just buttons. That does take a bit of the magic away. 
talking about the button the controller it feels very joycon as as in the whole thing feels very uh nintendo ish if i can see that but it is heavier obviously the controller is solid the buttons have xbox labeling windows detects this as a xbox 360 controller so the compatibility is high now let's jump to the last two games on our list gta 5 and star wars jedi fallen order the i and neo hits a silky smooth 60 fps on gta 5 with low settings and yes i'm very much aware that i suck With Star Wars, it tends to drop slightly under thirty FPS at times, but for the most part, the gaming experience is again great. Now, if you're thinking, what thirty FPS great has this guy been drinking? Jokes apart. Now, guys, these days all the talk has been about you know ninety hertz, one twenty hertz, one forty four, one sixty five with smartphones, but when it comes to AAA gaming with consoles, thirty FPS is still considered the standard. Now, even with current generation PS5, Xbox Series X, if you look at it, we get multiple options, right? There's a performance mode which gets you to 60, uh, 60 FPS at say full HD ish, but if you want the quality mode, you get a 30 FPS lock. So this game, by that standard, it's considered very much playable. And me personally, I had no issues. I really loved uh, playing this. Now, given how well I and you has managed to run AAA titles. It should come as no surprise that emulation via Retro Arch is being handled with ease, and I've even dropped the TDP to seven watts so battery life when you're playing retro games. It should be really good. Now, even more recent systems like the Wii U run great. This is Super Mario Bros. U running at a smooth 60 FPS. Uh, the TDP is just 15 watts speeded up. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? It was very smooth. I didn't expect this kind of a performance with Wii U, which is not. a very nice system to emulate. I did dabble a little bit with PS3 and Xbox 360 emulation. The results were mixed now. That's beyond the scope of this video. If you guys want, if you guys are interested, I'll do a detailed video on PS3 and Xbox 360 emulation. It definitely seems to be possible. Now, we've seen a lot of positives about this, about the Aya Neo. But it is a first generation product in fact this is actually a pre-release version of a gen 1 product it's still not available outside china it's on indiegogo at the moment and i'll leave a link to anybody interested in the description below uh, anyway what i was saying is that since this is a gen 1 product it's not all roses there are some cons uh, like i said as a pre-release founders edition the final version uh, it could address these issues Uh, it's not going to be transparent but white or black uh, and some of these issues can most definitely be addressed in the final product with that said with that disclaimer out of the way let's get to con number 1 the speaker it is so damn silent i mean you know open up a dictionary look up abysmal and i'm sure you can see i and your speakers that is how bad it is next the vibration motor it's at the other end of the spe spectrum it is very heavy with games where there's a lot of rumble It's almost impossible to use. You have to turn it off. That is how the rumble is. Con number three: the lack of a full-sized USB port. Aya does include an adapter, but guys, remember this device, unlike its competition, lacks any kind of physical keyboard. And Windows, as much as Microsoft doesn't want it to be, it's still a very keyboard and mouse-friendly operating system. Steam's big picture mode notwithstanding. Uh, You consistently need a keyboard and mouse at times to speed up some of the processes. I had does provide some solid shortcut keys here to counter that. Uh, here to the right, uh, we've got Windows, Escape, uh, Task Manager, and Keyboard. To the left, we have one that controls LEDs. Now, given the final variant will not be transparent, I wonder what they're gonna map this to. But any which ways, uh, then there is a game bar key along with Select and Start. Now, while the presence of these shortcut buttons is very handy, uh, I'd still have loved to see a full-sized USB that should have helped with the convenience aspect of things when you need to plug in something real quick. That's something that both GPD and uh, One Notebook have addressed. Now, Aya has addressed one of my biggest complaints with the Switch, though. The charging port at the bottom. This means you can't charge a Switch and play while having it rest on a kickstand. Here though you can charge this via the Type C port up top as well, uh, so this is totally possible. But what about docking, Ash? Uh, doesn't this mean docking doesn't work? You can't really dock it. Makes it difficult, right? 
If that's your question, do know that I said you can charge it via the port up top as well, meaning you can use the bottom port too. I uh, is supposed to be selling a dock. I've not been able to head, get my hands on it, uh, but then that is supposed to uh, be something you can buy. Well, on the topic of ports, one caveat with going Ryzen is the lack of Thunderbolt. With Thunderbolt support, we should have been able to plug a device like this uh, into an eGPU and get a lot more performance when plugged in or docked. Even though technically possible, as of now, no Ryzen laptop provides Thunderbolt support. So when we aren't seeing that from bigger players, it's unfair to expect a newcomer like I had to actually deliver on that front. So guys, that's about everything I and Neo. This handheld starts at $799, which compared to something like the Switch is pretty expensive. But consoles are priced uh, much cheaper than PCs for a reason. Here's a short clip from my PC versus console video. Let's cut to that right now. What do we have here? One is a walled garden of consoles. The barrier of entry here is pretty low. The experience is pretty consistent. Heck, in a vacuum, it gets, it kind of does get better with age. End of life games generally look way better than launch titles do. The games are priced a little on the higher side. Basically, the console itself is more of a gateway. The actual products, the games, accessories, and services that you are sold over the duration of the console's lifetime, uh, that seems to be what you're actually paying for. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the hardware is refreshed after such a long time. Be it Sony or Microsoft or even Nintendo, they want the max time possible to earn as much as they can off a single console. On the PC side of things, it's a lot different. Each thing comes with its own profit margin, leading to a higher price of entry. So that higher price of entry might mean something like the Aya Neo might not be for everyone. But if you do have the cash to burn, if portable gaming is something that's of interest to you, the Aya Neo might just be what the doctor ordered. It's on Indiegogo at the moment, link in the description below, so do check it out. Uh, and I guess that's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna continue bringing more niche content like this. I'm frankly, uh, frankly speaking, I'm tired of uh, smartphone content at this point. So if you find videos like this refreshing, if you wanna see more of these kind of content, show your support, subscribe, like, share. Uh, and if there's any other cool stuff you want me to cover, leave that in the comments. With that, it is time for me to bid you adieu. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.